Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson joins me now. Sir, it's good to have you on the show. You know, Biden hasn't denied anything so far. Uh, we know he took classified documents. We know some were top secret. He wasn't president when it happened, so he couldn't have declassified them. So it seems like it's a, a fairly slam dunk case. But I guess that presupposes that you're actually going to have a real special counsel here and not like a prop. Absolutely, Robin. Like you said, you know, you make a great case that this guy was involved in the Steele dossier. And, you know, he worked for other people that I no longer trust. They were also in the, in the Trump administration. He worked for uh, Rod Rosenstein. He worked for uh, current uh, director of the FBI, who was a, the a deputy attorney general at the time. He worked for uh, Christopher Ray, who's yeah. the current director of the FBI. And God knows I don't trust that guy anymore. Right. So these are people that are part of the deep state. These are people that have been uh, involved in weaponizing the government against uh, their political adversaries. And this guy's coming from that background. So I, I'm not willing to give this guy the benefit of the doubt right now. I think you're probably right. I think there's a reason that they picked this guy. And, uh, you know, it's somebody that they think that, you know, will we'll give them the outcome that they ultimately want. But, you know, let's just start by saying, like, this is crazy, Rob. This is absolutely crazy. This is going on. I want to make a point that hasn't been brought up a lot is that, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. I keep hearing the excuse that, well, they were locked up in a closet or they were in a secured space. And Biden says yeah. that his garage was locked. None of that crap matters. None of that matters. He did not have the authority to have those documents outside of a classified controlled space inside the White House or you know, a skiff somewhere. And I, I worked at the White House for 15 years, including the eight years that, uh, that uh, Biden was vice president. And I know exactly how this process works. Those documents cannot be moved around unless yeah. they're in a uh, locked briefcase. And the people that move them around actually have to have a courier card. I had a courier card when I was there. The military aides, the other people that move classified information around, they had a courier card. And those documents are in, in brightly colored folders. They have cover sheets on them. They're stamped. So there's no excuse. Now, they're going to make in the case that, you know, that they were just stupid and uh, naive and they didn't know that the documents were there uh, and that they were in the garage and whatnot. Now, right. I, I will grant, and you know, we've watched this administration for two years, I can buy that argument that they were stupid, naive, and didn't know. But that does not make it okay. If those documents were found in my garage and I told them that one of my staff members or something put them there without my knowledge, that would mean nothing to these people. Right. I would still right. be responsible and for it. He's responsible for it. And, and Congressman, you, you know, we, we know that it's classified documents. I think to most people at home that have never worked in Washington, that doesn't necessarily mean a lot. I think I think the context of what the documents were is, is so critically important here. And we don't know a lot, but we do know that he took documents about Iran and he took documents about Ukraine. And there's only less than 20 documents. So it almost seems like he was choosing specific things for whatever reason. Ukraine well, is the one that stands out the most. You, you've yeah. got you, you, we know that Hunter was Joe's bag man for Ukraine, that they made together a fortune off Ukraine. Eighty thousand a month was going to Hunter. We know that money goes to Joe as well. We know it's not just a Hunter scheme. This is a family scheme. They're making money off Joe's uh, access and his power in Washington. Uh, you know, this this is this is what it is. And now we learn that Hunter was living with his dad in the home where these classified documents were found. Uh, and I just wonder, does That's that right. change anything? I'm not sure that it does. Well, Rob, obviously, I mean, there's 20 that we know about. Who knows how many more there were that they got rid of, that they burned, destroyed, or that, you know, basically that disappeared over the years. Yeah. Those documents were there for six years since he left. And I'll just make a point to say that he only had Secret Service uh, protection. Vice presidents only get Secret Service protection for six months after the end of the administration. And then he didn't pick up Secret Service protection again until he started running for president again, which was, you know, less than two years before he was elected. So there was a period of time, 18 to 24 months, probably closer to 24 months, where he had no Secret Service protection. So that was just a normal person's garage. That was also the time where it was listed on Hunter Biden's driver's license as being his home. So he was in and out of there all the time. So who knows what happened yep. to these documents? Who knows how many of these right. things yep. Hunter and Hunter's friends and, and his, you know, the, his business partners overseas that are our adversaries right now had access to? This is a huge deal. This is nothing compared to what happened to President Trump, because President Trump had the authority to take those documents and review them before they were being archived, because he left as the president of the United States, not the vice president. And he had the authority while he was president to declassify those yeah. documents. And Joe Biden did not have that authority. Right. He never had that authority. Right. And it's no different than those documents being in his his house than they would if they were in my house. Congressman, you're not wrong. Thank you so much uh, for taking the time on a Friday night. And uh, the new book right there, Holding the Line. Congressman Ronnie Thank Jackson, you, Rob. thank you so it. much uh, for taking the time. We appreciate it. Good to see you. You bet.